We continue with part two of two, Yellowstone recent deformation and quakes. What is being done to stop the eruption? And these are significant details. A lot of these details I didn't even know about, and I've already done over 200 Yellowstone uh, videos. Uh, one of the things that we learned about is that Idaho, Idaho has a supervolcano, and I learned it from this article. Uh, the, the area is about 1,600 uh, kilometers away from Yellowstone. But continuing on this, we're, we left it at um, the year, uh, chronologically going, the year 2014. Uh, in the month of, uh, oh, we left, we, we, in the, we left it at uh, the fact that this unusual seismic activity, we even saw that the Haiti earthquake affected a, an earthquake swarm taking place in Yellowstone, which is like a third of the, uh, the, the world away. Um, now, the unusual seismic activity prolonged huge amounts of data to scholars. When they studied the advanced of seismic waves, they discovered that Yellowstone supervolcano is 250 times larger than what they previously thought. The scientists participating in the annual meeting of the Union of Geophysicists of the USA in San Francisco, they knew that the magmatic cavern is 90 kilometers long, 30 wide, and up to 15 kilometers deep, with a volume that exceeds 20,000 square kilometers of magma. And that just eight kilometers separate us from this apocalyptic place. It's a terrifying news, which, however, hardly occupies media space. The MSM do not report on things like this. Now, the 2000, starting in 2014, in the month of June, several roads of the National Park close to the public, uh, that, like the one that allows access to the geyser, the, the Old Faithful Geyser, the most famous of the park, it's even recommended not to walk near the area because what looks like solid ground might not be. You may sink into it. And of course, at the risk of your own life. The heat from the interior had melted the asphalt and the gravel of the road. The spokesman for the park was very explicit. He said uh, he basically turned the asphalt, it, the uh, Yellowstone uh, um, heat basically turned the asphalt into a soup and transform the gravel roads into oatmeal porridge, end quote. And uh, he did not hesitate to describe the situation as extreme and unusual. As an example of activity on the website, the Volcano Monitoring Center, November 25th, 2014, said 11 earthquakes were detected on that day. 1.86 at 11 in the morning, at 7.11, sorry, 17.11, before that, it was uh, 1.78 magnitude at 14.37 hours, 0 0.74 at 9.11, and so on and so forth. Now, scientists call for tranquility, being, you know, being calm and collected. The situation in Yellowstone does not indicate that a short-term eruption will occur. And then we go on to 2017. On March 14, uh, I have to tell you that this article was written in uh, uh, December 12, 2017, so that was before the start of the um, uh, Norris Geyser Basin steamboat eruptions. Okay, so March 14, 2017, the level of the waters on the southeast shore of Yellowstone Lake rose by six feet. Yellowstone Lake waters rose by six feet. It's not the first time that the trees on the shore are suddenly flooded by the water. The satellites show that there has been a sudden increase in the soil of the northern area of the caldera, meaning the ground, uh, the ground deformation rising, which has lowered the level of the lake. There is a strong smell of gas in the air, meaning a sulfuric, the rotten smelling, the, 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 the smell of rotten eggs, it's recommended that visitors avoid the place. Uh, October 23, 2017, two hectares of dead trees appear affected by the emissions of gases. I have to tell you that the past few days, the uh, Yellowstone live webcams are all down. They're not showing anything. 
uh, even though the old faithful had a tremendously beautiful new camera it was higher than the older one was which was pretty uh, almost uh, eye level to the ground level this new camera was fantastic because it was higher up meaning that you could see further out in the surrounding areas past um, old faithful geysers and they used to pan they would pan the um, uh, the, the the scope that we could see all around the area so we could see far out and beyond and we could see a lot of geyser activity steaming everywhere and uh, I don't know why, why they turned it off it was just a new camera but they turned all of them off uh, I tried to see yesterday a couple of times I just gave up uh, we'll keep an eye on it and they I don't know what they, they did not say why they're down when I looked yesterday they did not say that you know where we have technical problems we'll be up and running shortly blah 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 nothing was said nothing so we'll check into that again but anyway going back to this um the flooded waters dead trees oh and we also saw dead trees you know they were as they were panning we saw dead trees in the area a lot of steam a lot of geysers and a lot of dead trees what can you say now okay now october 23rd, 2017, two hectares of dead trees appear affected by the gas emissions. The trees have dried up and there are squirrels and other small mammals killed by the poisoned gas. The area is closed and prevents access. On December 12th, 2017, a change in the geysers operating patterns is observed. Specifically, it doesn't stop expelling water. Okay, that means that the Hydro, the, the plumbing systems have changed somehow. 2019, uh, the behavior of the peaks hydrothermal becomes more unpredictable. USGS sends the government a confidential report which shows it's concerned about these new indications. Everything seems to indicate that the pressure of the magnetic chamber is increasing, seismic swarms are increasing, and the foci are detected at a lower depth. The measurements in this lake show an increase in its level of activity acidity which implies that gases coming from cracks at the bottom of the boiler are dissolving it's not necessary to raise the level of alarm but it's recommended to review the eviction procedures and action in case of eruption i wonder if they ever had you know they have this next next couple of days are going to have a simulation of an asteroid strike uh, as of course, the, the, it's going to be a stupid drill because it's only going to be a tabletop uh, drill. <laughs> they're they're going to be pretending they have an asteroid strike while they're all leaning over a table. What is What good is that going to do? That's that absolute nonsense. <laughs> they're spending time and money doing absolute nonsense. You know, there's nothing you could do. With an, <laughs> unless you... I, do, I did have one of my viewers had a beautiful comment uh, he said you can't uh you can't hit it because you'll just turn it into a uh, hundred new fragments that'll just keep coming into the earth and you know uh, uh, fall all over the place uh so that's not going to solve anything he says the best thing you could do is throw a net over it and take it out into space and uh, and i told him to please give that he had a beautiful idea I don't know, maybe he's an engineer or, or, a, construct, or a contractor, I don't know. Um, uh, he, should, he should give his idea to NASA and to the White House and to FEMA, you know, because they may sort of take that and run with it and it could be quite successful. Uh, but have they ever had a drill concerning what to do in case of uh, a Yellowstone eruption? I don't know what to say. Now they go on to uh, uh, extrapolate these. For example, they go on to the year 2024. We're not there yet, unless I'm living in the Mandela effect, and I don't know, because uh, we're still in 2019, as, as far as I know. And I wish you a happy May. This is already May 1st here in Athens, Greece. Um, 2024. The last three years have been quiet. It has even remitted the seismic activity. But suddenly, February 4th, a park suffers 
The park suffers an earthquake with an intensity of 6.8, locating one of the faults that crosses the park from north to northwest. An inter, uh, indeterminate amount of water from frozen Yellowstone Lake has disappeared. The geothermal activity of the whole park stops abruptly. It's the worst sign. The Yellowstone Observatory closes the park and recommends evicting civilians living within a 60-kilometer diameter of the park. The news programs dedicate their programming entirely to what is happening in Yellowstone. This is, of course, hypothetical, what they're saying here now. On June 23rd, the state of alarm has cooled considerably in public opinion. The park remains closed, but voices of businessmen and politicians are heard calling for its reopening. The media are spreading the news of political scandal. The day dawns calm and hot. A Yellowstone Observatory, which monitors the seismic and tectonic activity of the Yellowstone with a scientific reinforcement team, the person in charge of the night shift reports a tremor of small magnitude 2.5, but at a depth of only 7 kilometers. The earthquake occurred in the center of the caldera under the lake. Hydrothermal systems still show no activity. At 12 in the morning, a fellow who is smoking outside calls his supervisor. It, it points to heaven. Thousands of birds leave Yellowstone in a southeasterly direction, darkening the sky, and it's not a time of migration. The supervisor calls by radio to those in charge of monitoring the activity throughout the park. From the observation post, the same news is repeated. The animals are on the move. They are leaving Yellowstone. The head of the observatory picks up a telephone with a direct link to the scientific um, advisor to the President of the United States. The animals do not lie. Yellowstone is going to explode. On June 25th, the silence is terrifying. No birds or animals are heard. The satellites report that the boiler bed has risen 10 meters in just 24 hours. A sudden, but you know, this is a hypothetical thing. I guess they're taking it into uh, what happened in uh, you know, Mount St. Helens in 1980. Uh, but on the shore of the lake, of Yellowstone Lake, the water level has dropped almost three meters. The sulfur smell penetrates, permeates the entire park, and there is a checkpoint of volunteer refugee, refugees 50 meters uh, underground. The National Guard is evacuating the entire civilian population that lives in a diameter of 90 kilometers. Radio and television broadcast institutional messages recommending to the entire population of the West and Center of the United States to stay inside their houses, stock up on food and collect the masks that the government has distributed to town halls and parish centers. If they see ash fall, they should not breathe outdoors without masks. It is possible that nothing happens, but you should be prepared. In the markets, there is already a shortage of food, can, canned foods and water containers. Many have opted to try to flee to the East Coast, but on many roads the traffic is collapsing. Gasoline starts missing. In other words, there's a shortage of gasoline. Uh, on June 28th at 2.45 p.m., Yellowstone Caldera finally collapses. A new earthquake has cracked the crust, practically melted by the immense heat, and the gases dissolved by the pressure suddenly change phase, forming bubbles that expand the magma and further increase the pressure. It's a chain reaction that in a matter of seconds releases the unimaginable amount of energy, more than 1,500 square kilometers of incandescent material explodes in the biggest explosion that the Earth has witnessed in 70,000 years. For a moment, the Earth's crust disappears, sinking dozens of kilometers with a radius of 40 kilometers it is an open wound on the planet, through which it bleeds gas, dust, and rock. The eruption causes the thousands of tons of water in Yellowstone Lake to suddenly change phase due to contact with the boiling entrails of the Earth. This fact releases an, un an, un an immeasurable amount of hydrothermal energy in the form of an explosion. The gap that opens is even greater a huge hole 70 kilometers in diameter frees up all the accumulated energy. The worst of the possible scenarios has occurred. Human civilization is doomed. In a few minutes, every trace of life dies within a radius of 200 kilometers. A refuges 
provisions or masks are useless. The best prepared can survive for a time, but can no longer leave what will be his grave imprisoned under meters of ash and rock. The explosion sweeps the planet at 1,200 kilometers an hour. The outbreak is heard around the globe. The supervolcano ejects a large amount of matter into the upper layers of the atmosphere. In a short time, a 24-hour darkness ensues. 2,000 kilometers around the volcano, the surface becomes a 3-meter thick, 10-foot thick ash wasteland. That's um, 2,000 kilometers around the volcano. Let me put the map there. We have to put the map there for that. So you can see now, this is the radius that, that you, it goes all the way from the west coast uh, through Idaho, through Nevada, Utah, Montana, North, uh, Canada, province of Canada, all the way into uh, North South Dakota and Nebraska. Okay. Uh, ten foot thick ash, wasteland, to a lesser extent all of the U.S., almost all of Canada, and a good part of Mexico are drowning under the layer of volcanic dust. The harvests of the world's largest corn and soybean producer are lost. The U.S. cannot produce food, but it's not a problem that only affects North America. Dust prevents the arrival of sunlight, which inhibits photosynthesis. Plants die all over the planet. Hunger takes very little time to cause great damage the food reserves are insufficient to support 6 million people. After a few months, billions of human beings lose their lives because of um, uh, famine. In addition, temperatures have dropped sharply, an average of 20 degrees Celsius. The planet enters a glacial era, which we cannot fight because of the lack of energy supply. The ash and the very low temperatures have obstructed, frozen, and prevented the supply of drinking water and gas to the houses. Vehicles cannot circulate because the components of the engines are destroyed by the effect of the ash. Commercial aviation suffers from the accumulation of particles, especially so-called jet streams. This winter of darkness and death will last at least 10 years. The decade without harvests, mobility, or energy, it is a sentence from which you cannot escape with life. But the worst is still yet to come. The supervolcano releases huge amounts of sulfur dioxide, SO2, into the atmosphere. This gas in the atmosphere adds another oxygen item and becomes sulfur trioxide. I never heard of that. Sulfur trioxide. This molecule is combined with water, H2O, incorporating the two hydrogen items, and the oxygen item H2SO4. Is that, isn't that, sul, is that sulfuric, it's not kind of an acid. From the sky, rain sulfuric, oh, sulfuric acid, okay. And this is H2SO4 becomes sulfuric acid raining from the, that's terrible. Every rest of life exposed to this rain dies. Of course, it's an acid, it eats away your skin, your hair, your flesh. The scenery is terrible. The oceans suffer the action of acid rain, which attacks the carbon cycle. Animals with shells die. That is almost all the zooplankton found at the base of the food chain. There is more, though. The destruction of Yellowstone has caused very strong seismic aftershocks in the United States. There are five specially exposed nuclear power plants located in areas of high seismic risk. There is a risk of radioactive contamination throughout the world. The control systems of the hundreds of nuclear power plants have not foreseen such a terrible scenario. There are no mobile phones, television, transportation, or energy. A few thousand fortunate people survive in shelters, while most of humanity disappears. Civilization based on technology has made us vulnerable. We do not know how to make fire how to look for water or have basic notions of survival. In an apocalyptic environment, leaving home is dangerous. Stay in it, a death sentence. 
but the production chains are useless without energy or raw materials, and shortages condemn us in just three months. The forces of order are not capable of preserving the social order. Protests and attacks proliferate. The collapse of a peaceful coexistence opposes the death of civilization. Humans survive, but nothing will be the same. From a world populated by seven billion people, we pass to another with a few hundred thousand. After 10 years, in 2034, we will have to start over. So, uh, the conclusion? Everything written until November 25th, 2014 is absolutely true. The question is, when will the Yellowstone eruption occur? We cannot know, but everything seems to indicate that it will not be an upcoming event. Possibly many generations will pass until we reach a level of real risk. Even then, the rash may not be as catastrophic as the one we described here above. Yellowstone is not the greatest danger we face. We would first put the impact of a large meteorite asteroid. However, the Yellowstone Control Center issues daily communications in real time it's convenient to be attentive to the signs. Look out, although there is little we can do. Now, okay, the biggest problem is an asteroid or meteor strike, comet strike. That's what they're going through to do to the tabletop exercise and drills that they're doing uh, in the next few days. Tabletop. Uh, but let's not forget that all the previous asteroid strikes whether it was the Yucatan Peninsula or um, the asteroid strikes and many of them in Australia and uh, many of them we recently talked about in the past videos in uh, North Africa, the ones in Egypt that they found through Google Earth and the other one in Iraq that they found through Google Earth, they were uh, what caused the volcanic eruptions. Okay? They, cr they caused the impounding the, the uh, impact, the strikes, causing the earthquakes, causing the fantastic heat and earthquakes, uh, which uh, gave rise to the uh, volcanic eruptions. You know, it's just a, ma a matter of time. What can you say? Oh, this is, I, I'm sorry if I, you know, okay, maybe it's time to have a tea or a coffee or, you know, a beer or something. Um, I just wanted to read this article and get this out to you because there's a few uh, new th items that we learned from this, especially concerning the supervolcano in Idaho. Okay, so I, I hope you got more information from that. I did, and I enjoyed that. And I'll leave a link below for you. This is the end of the two-part series that we read from this. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.